Welcome to Reaper TV. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can add reverb to our project. We're going to control exactly what tracks go through that reverb channel and how we can then mix that back with the original recording to give it a more spacious sound and open up the overall recording to give it that more professional and polished edge. So let's take a look at how we do that right now. So to start off with, before we do anything, let's look at why we want to put the reverb on its own dedicated channel. The whole point is that when you add reverb, you want that reverb to be consistent across all of the different tracks that utilize reverb effect. So if you add a different reverb to every single track on your entire project, you have to make sure that all of the settings are identical on every single one of those. Otherwise, you're going to find you may get phasing issues or problems with the overall sound not sitting as you'd expect it to. You also then have to go in and adjust every single time you use that if you want to make an alteration. So it makes more sense to have a dedicated track just having the reverb on there so that if you want to make any changes to that, you can just affect one track and everything else that's routed through that or bust through that particular track will have the reverb effect altered. You know you're not going to have any problems then with the overall audio. So the easiest way to do that is to ensure, first of all, that none of the plugins that you're using to create any sounds on your entire recording are using their own dedicated reverb. So in the example track that I've got open, I know that my instance of Easy Drummer and the particular Easy X that I'm using on there does have reverb applied to it. So the first thing I want to do is go in and disable that or mute that reverb effect to make sure that that doesn't interfere with the track that we're going to add in. So if I scroll down and I just open up my Easy X, you can see that if I scroll across to the right hand side, we've got the option in there for reverb. So if I just solo that and I just solo the drum track, we can just have a quick listen to just the reverb effect on there and we can mute and then unmute that in a second. So let's have a listen. So all we need to do is just mute that. That now turns off the reverb effect. So that's now switched off in my drum sequencing. So the next thing you want to do is just going to create a new track. Now it doesn't matter where you put this. You can put it at the beginning or the end. It's not really important. All that's important is that we add a new track in there and we just give it a name of reverb. Now, all I'm going to do is apply my reverb to this. So I'm going to hit the effects button and I'm just going to paste in the effect that I want. Now I'm just using the positive grid reverb just for the sake that it's already set up for me as quick and easy. So it doesn't matter what reverb you decide to use. It's all about just making sure that you've got its own dedicated track. So there's our reverb track setup. Now it's going to do nothing at the moment because we've got an effect applied to it, but nothing is actually going through that. So the next thing we need to do is set up the routing to make sure that the relevant tracks are being routed through the reverb effect, which we can then use to mix in any way we want with the rest of the track. And Reaper makes dealing with anything to do with routing incredibly easy. We can drag and drop this or we can use various different ways to do the same thing. The other thing that's useful to note is because I use parent tracks, so you can see the vocal master, and if I scroll up, we've got all the drums go to the drum master, the bass go to the bass master, and the guitars go to the guitar master. We can just use those to route through the reverb if we want to. So all I need to do is where we've got this I.O., I can just simply click and drag with my left mouse button, and you see we get the little sort of quarter inch jack attached to it. Drag that down over the I.R. button, so the I.O. button, on the reverb track, let go, and that sets up the routing for that. And as you can see, it shows me exactly what's being done. So I can specify whether I want it to be post fader, or if I want to set it to be pre fader, pre effects. I've got a whole different range of ways that I can control how this is actually routed. So we'll leave that as it is. And I'm just going to bring the track right the way to the top just to make my life a little bit easier when I'm dealing with setting all this up. So I'm going to do the same for the guitar master, I'm going to do the same for the bass. And then finally, we'll come down to the drums. 
and we'll do the same on there. So we'll just route that up and through there. So there we go. So there's our routing done. And if I click on the I.O. button, you can see there's all our routing in place. So we've got our sends and receives have all been set up. So we've got guitar master, bass master, drum master, and vocal master. So all those master tracks are going through it. And obviously because our child tracks are going through the master track or the parent, and that's what's being routed through to this, then all of the different channels that are going through those are already going to be going through our reverb. I hope that kind of makes sense. So we've got everything routed the way we want it now, so I can go in and I can start listening to the reverb effect itself. So the easiest way to do this is if I just solo this now, then everything that's been routed through this, we've got everything all turned off, and all we're going to hear is the reverb effect being applied to all of the tracks that are going into the reverb channel. So I'll just solo the reverb, and if I hit play on this now, we're going to hear just the reverb effect of all those tracks going into this particular reverb track. So let's just have a listen to that. So as you can hear, we've now got just the reverb effect. So because that's on its own dedicated track, or well, we can now mix that in with the actual overall track. So if I turn off the solo on there, I can now start mixing this back in to the track and get the level that I like just to give it that space and the sound like we recorded it in a room as opposed to a dead sterile environment. So I'll just play that back and I'll show you how we can mix this in, how easy it is. So what you can see from the demo is that we can now add that reverb in. We can control exactly how much reverb is being used on any particular part of the recording. We can even start going in and apply automation to that if we want to, to control the level of any of that reverb during any part of the song. So we get a huge amount of control and flexibility on how we can work with that reverb throughout our entire track. Now obviously you don't have to do it this way, you could if you wanted to set up reverb for different parts of the tracks. So you could say you want your guitars to have one reverb, and you can have your bass to have a different reverb to the drums. But obviously the benefit of this is the fact we have one track to change to make any global adjustment to the reverb that's been applied to the overall recording. And then we can use the, the slider, the fader in there so we can mix the amount we want in there. And there's a whole range of other benefits you get from doing it this way. But it really is a good way of working when you want to apply reverb to your track as a whole without applying it multiple different times. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you an insight into how you can add reverb to your tracks. I hope it's given you a good way to show you how you can deal with routing your information through different tracks as well. If you did find it useful, please give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the content we add on a weekly basis. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and try to answer as many questions as possible. Well, until next time, happy mixing.